This is the Blind Grilling Experience, and I am the most interesting griller in the world. Welcome back to the Blind Grilling Experience. My name is Chris Peltz, and we have an awesome show planned for you today. Appreciate everybody tuning in. We would encourage you to check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash blindgrilling, our Facebook channel at facebook.com slash blindgrilling. You can check us out also on all the social media at Blind Grilling as well, Twitter and Instagram uh, there also. But joining us today is Mr. Lyndall Scranton. He is one of the hosts of the Tailgate Guys Barbecue Show. Lyndall, good to have you on the program. Chris, thanks so much. It's great to be with you. Yeah, absolutely, man. I've been looking forward to this and and uh, getting to chat with you. Um, you and Steve Kohler host the Tailgate Guys Barbecue Show and uh, just a lot of awesome information, a lot of great information that you guys are always providing, some great talks that you guys have about cooks and just about the barbecue community as a whole, which is great. Uh, and and we'll get into some of that as well. But um, but I thought, first of all, you know, um, to kind of go back to when you guys started and, and maybe, you know, what, why you got it started. And I know you started as far as the, the radio is concerned before you went to podcasting, you were on a local radio station here in Springfield, Missouri. Um, but, uh, but wh- why did you get that started? Well, we started the show on radio in January of 2016. And just the backstory, Steve and I worked together at the uh, Springfield newspaper for oh, 25 years or so. And we were neighbors in North Springfield for about 20 years, up until uh, two years ago when he moved to the other side of town. So we always were out cooking on weekends and talking about our cooking experiences and and so forth. And uh, I left the newspaper business in the fall of 2015. He had left to go uh, take a job at OTC as as a journalism instructor a few years before that. And when I left, I always, uh, I said, you know, it'd be fun to have a, Number one, a barbecue radio show sometime, and number two, to be a competition barbecue team. So uh, in talking with a local sportscaster who was a program director at the uh, KICK radio station, I just happened to mention one night at a basketball game, man, it would be fun to have a barbecue radio show. He said, well, I I think I can set that up for you. So we uh, went in and talked to station management, and Steve and I decided to launch a barbecue radio show right in the middle of wintertime, which seems in retrospect kind of a silly thing, <laughs> thing to do. Yeah. But uh, second week of January that year, we were uh, off and running, and we spent three years on the uh, local radio station and then decided to uh, take it to podcast in 2019. And, you know, with, with kind of a niche audience like a barbecue or whatever the subject may be, I think podcasting is really right. Uh, it's in the wheelhouse of, uh, of that uh, type of format. So it, it's been a, been a really good move for us. We've ha- had a lot of new listeners and uh, expanded our audience. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you have. And it's, uh, it's really been neat because um, not only do you talk about barbecue, you guys uh, talk a lot about sports. I know when you were on the radio program, um, you guys talked a lot about local sports, whether it was the St. Louis Cardinals, Kansas City Royals, the Chiefs, or you know whoever it was going to be, um, and St. Springfield Cardinals. And so there was a lot of sports talk. I know that's been kind of <laughs> kind of shut down right. right now, so not not as much going on there. But um, but uh, but and I guess even with the barbecue community, what's really been cool about the podcast that you guys have been doing is. Um, not only keeping everybody informed on some of the competitions, especially in the day and age right now where everything seems to be up in the air, but, um, but the guests that you guys have been able to compile, um, on, on your resume of shows is just been spectacular. It's been unbelievable, which is, uh, which is great. And, um, and I've really enjoyed listening to you guys because not only are you sharing some of your, your own, uh, cooks, your own, um, you know, uh, success and failures, right? I mean, with some of the things that happened, uh, but, uh, you know, you've been able to, to bring on and share the national scene, which is awesome. Um, and, and I really love how you've been able to do that. Um, 
I, I I got in touch with you shortly after you guys got started. It was it was kind of funny because I was I was uh, had contacted a local grill store and said, "Man, I I think we ought to have a um, a, a radio show for barbecue." And they had said, "Well, you know, there's that's been in in the thought process before, but you know, we're not interested." And uh, of course, they're no longer in that store is no longer in in Springfield. Uh, but two other stores did pop up, and so I did. A, I had done a Google search, and it just so happened one of those other stores at the time were um, were you know sponsoring your radio program, and um, and then and that's how I found you. It showed up that you guys had started. I'm like, wow, somebody <laughs> is is thinking the same way I am, and and got it going, and uh, and I was honored to be a guest on your uh, radio program for a, a few times as well, and. Uh, um, but looking back at both the radio and, and the podcast, what you've been able to do, who are, uh, some of the guests maybe that really stand out to you? Who's been some of your favorite guys to talk to? Well, you know, when we began, we really didn't have any idea what direction we would go as far as who we could get as guests. We were just billing ourselves as two regular guys who love to talk about barbecue, and trying to get people smarter than us to talk talk to us about it and bring enlightenment to our listeners. But, of course, I was, a, like many, a fan of the old Barbecue Pitmaster shows on television, and those guys uh, kind of inspired me to, to uh, try to get some of them on the show. And it's been amazing in reaching out to these folks and getting a hold of them through social media or, uh, or however. Almost, almost 100% they've, they, people have agreed to come on the show. Uh, people like Big Mo Kaysan, uh, Myron Mixon, Tuffy Stone, uh, Stephen Reichlin has been been a great guest, and then the list goes on and on. Diva Q, uh, just, it's really been a who's who, and just been very fortunate for those folks that have uh, come on the show, and probably uh, only a couple of people that we've tried for have uh, not been able to line up yet. We'd love to have Aaron Franklin on. We had him lined up to come on the show a couple of years ago. Then his restaurant yeah. caught fire. Right. So he's, and of course, he's an awfully busy guy. So uh, that's another one we'd love to have on sometime. Johnny Trigg, the uh, godfather of barbecue, uh, another one we'd love to have on. Although some of the people who know him have said he's not a great interview anyway. So uh, <laughs> maybe it's not such a great loss. Yeah. But it's been amazing the uh, knowledge we've been able to uh, bring, bring to the listeners and uh, bring to ourselves by just having the, these folks come on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which is really neat. Uh, Malcolm Reed has been one, you know, he's, he's someone that I think uh, most everyone that I know watches his YouTube and, and things, and you've had him on and been able to talk to him and, uh, and then a few others that you've mentioned, which uh, again, have just been some, just some great guests and, and very, uh, very informative. I mean, just, just to see not only, like you said, you know, a couple of guys that want to talk about barbecue and then you get these guys that have these names that everyone knows across the country and, and find out they're, they're just a couple of regular, you know, they're just regular folks too that love to barbecue and they've just, uh, you know, done a little bit more with it perhaps, but um, you know, they're just really down to earth and, and good folks. It's really been neat. You know, the interviews that you guys have been able to do. So, um, now as far as, um, competitions, I mean, you, you started the radio program I mean, and, but you did that before you guys started doing barbecue competitions. I had one competition before the barbecue okay. radio show days. It was, I was still at the news leader newspaper and they were a corporate sponsor of the 2015 rock and ribs barbecue festival in Springfield. And, uh, they said, Hey, we have a, they knew I liked my bosses knew I liked to cook barbecue. So they said, Hey, we have this spot, this cooking spot. If you want it, you can take it. And I knew absolutely nothing about competition barbecue uh, and showed up there and it was really an eye opening experience. Yeah. I, although I, I think we finished 52nd out of 67 teams, which was a miracle compared considering what we didn't know going in, but yeah, but that was our one time to compete. And I was wanting to do it again. We started the radio show and I thought it would be a great way to get out there and not only promote the show, but meet people and find out what it's like. And we could talk about our, uh, our first off was many failures and then a few successes we've had along the way. And uh, hopefully bring that experience as a couple of regular guys trying to play against some of the big boys in the competition world. Right. We have a lot of good ones around this part of the country. Yeah, yeah, we do. We really do. And not only um, the competitions themselves that are 
um, that are well known. But yeah, the the guys that compete in them, there's a lot of folks from here in the Ozarks that uh, are, have made some pretty good names for themselves. Now, what is what has been your best cook in competition? Um, you know, as far as because there's three or four basic meats when it goes because you're you're just doing KCBS, right? Yeah, I've I've done a few state competitions, but okay. now that's Steve has kind of taken that part over. Okay, but I do the KCBS, which has the four basics. Four basics, and and what's been your best score or scoring meet? You know, which which one of those four do you do best in? Well, last year we had our first ever first place in a category. We had first place pork in a competition at Kimberling City, Missouri, and that was against. Uh, two of the top teams in the country getting basted and uh, boomerang barbecue. The two last two KCBS teams of the year were there. Yeah. So we got a first place pork that day. So we were wow. awfully, awfully excited about that. Yeah. And we, we've had top tens over the last three years in all four categories, but just none of none at the same time. Obviously we've not been able to put together the four meets in the same contest yet. Of course, that's where cooking uh, five to six times a year, it's hard to do that when the teams are coming in cooking 35 or 40 times a year. They have that consistency. Right, yeah. And and uh, and they're traveling a lot more. I mean, I, I've, um, I don't know how much you guys have traveled. What's the furthest you guys have gone from Springfield to compete? Yeah, we've, we've kind of been limited to about an hour radius of Springfield. Mm-hmm. We're set to go to Osceola, Missouri next week, which is about 60 miles north. We uh, we have a, a I guess you would call it a bucket list dream of cooking at the American Royal. We we thought about doing it this year, but but with work obligations, my wife and I are are the KCBS team, uh, and just both of us having uh, to work that weekend would make it impossible. So we're going to shoot for hoping to do the Royal uh, in twenty twenty one. Right. Okay. Yeah. And of course here in Springfield, um, rock and ribs is no longer they've that's it's someone else has taken that over and doing something else here in Springfield, which was canceled this year to, right. to begin with anyway. Uh, and so th- that's been another problem, I guess, is just, uh, a lot of the, uh, the competitions just no longer, uh, are even taking place this year. Um, I think you had mentioned on one of your programs, that uh, originally they had moved Memphis in May to October, but now it, it's that's not even taking place. Yes, now Memphis in May has been canceled until 2021. Uh, the Jack Daniels Invitational in Lynchburg, Tennessee, another one of the majors, it's it's also canceled. The American Royal is still still set to go in mid mid September and get uh, Kansas Speedway, but that's a lot of speculation about that uh, whether it's going to happen or not. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, you know, when it, because you guys got started in all of this from just backyard barbecue, um, was there, I'm sure, of course, the learning curve, like you've already kind of alluded to that with the learning curve from the first time you competed here at, in Springfield at Rock and Ribs and then uh, to now jumping into competition altogether. But it, have you found there a big difference between when you're cooking for a competition and when you are just backyard grilling or smoking? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot different just from the fact of trying to cook four things at once and having to adhere to that timeline, 30 minutes between uh, turn in times, you know, chicken starts the day at, at 12 noon and ribs have to be turned in at 1230, then pork at one and brisket at one thirty. When you're cooking in the backyard, uh, it's a, it's a lot more laid back, obviously. Although I, what I will try to do is, is, make a practice cook and hone in on one meat and try to get as good as I can Mm -hmm. at that and cook it competition style because there is a certain style that that you need to cook. You really jack your flavor profiles up because you're going after that one bite wow factor with the judges. And really, if you're cooking for the family, while they do, they really enjoy uh, my competition style barbecue, but it's probably not something you want to get filled up on. There's a lot of extra spices and rubs and Mm -hmm. so forth that are in, it's in that meat. Yeah. What is your favorite thing just backyard to to go out and fire up the grill and and cook? Well, I've I've always been a, been a fan of ribs. I love cooking ribs whether they're uh, baby backs or the St. Louis cuts that uh, that St. Louis uh, that uh, KCBS teams cook. I I think if you can become really good at cooking a slab of ribs, that's probably a a, a good good guideline you can use to cook uh, cook your other meats as well. Yeah. 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 And that's in, it's kind of interesting because I've, I've never actually been a big fan of ribs altogether until probably the last couple of years. And, 
Um, and you know, the more and more I cook them, um, you know, the, it's, it's still probably not my favorite. I, I still prefer beef for sure, but, um, yeah, they're growing on me. They're, <laughs> they're, yeah. And I, I should yeah. say that brisket is, is really probably the king of all meats for me. Yeah. It's just that it's so expensive to go out and, and buy a brisket, especially in this day and age with the, with the shortages and the spiked prices. Uh, to my, I, I, brisket is really the most enjoyable meat if one, if you cook it right, just, yeah, in, just yeah. my opinion. Sure. Oh yeah. I'm with you on that for sure. And, uh, and, it, and that's actually, it, um, we, uh, we're very fortunate because not knowing any of this was going to take place the, the way this year has gone. But at the end of last year in December, we actually went and got a cow and had it processed. And so we haven't experienced the shortage because we have, <laughs> we have okay. a cow, you know, but I, I hear a lot of folks talking about that and, and I can only imagine how much worse it would have been with the competitions if they would still be taking place. Well, and, and, and some competitions in the last few weeks have started to come back on a, on a local basis. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, one, just as, just as a side note, one of the most scary things that can happen if you have uh, some high quality meat that's in your freezer is to be browsing through your garage someday and uh, look over and, and see the doors open partly. And uh, that happened to us recently. And oh, no. and it, it had been, I'm not sure how long it had been open, but apparently less than 24 hours. And we had some of those uh, freezer packs uh, that were that we had stored from some meat shipments to, that keeps meat cold. Mm. Fortunately, the, the, we had those in there just, just to have them in there. And uh, that helped. And we didn't lose anything. We did nothing, nothing completely thawed out. So we had... We had some high-quality briskets and uh, and ribs in there that we didn't lose, but that's the most scary thing I think can happen to a yeah. to someone who loves meat and loves to barbecue. Yeah, yeah, it would be. Yeah, yeah. We we had a fuse blow um, where ours is plugged in, and it's out in the garage, so we uh, we just don't go to the garage that often. And uh, just so happened the the same day it, we act, we caught it the same day, so nothing thought, and we were able to get things you know, taken care of. But yeah, that, that is scary. Cause that's my, I mean, my, my heart just sank. <laughs> I was like, Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have an aw- awesome sponsor on our show, so, the butcher shop out of Pensacola, Florida. Yeah. And he'd shipped me some a nine, uh, Kobe briskets. And, uh, I was just saying, man, I sure hope we don't lose those. And right, yeah. fortunately we didn't live by, I still haven't figured out how to cook them just right for the judges. So. Yeah. Yeah. Which I got to go and visit, uh, the butcher shop, uh, just a few weeks ago last, uh, and, uh, and it was awesome. Great, great folks. And, uh, just a, a really neat store down in Pensacola. Um, and man, they've got, they've got so much stuff down there when it comes to different types of meat. Um, and, uh, so we were on vacation down there and actually got a few things to grill and, and cook while we were there. And so, um, so yeah, I got to stop by and visit one of the sponsors to, a you know, a local <laughs> barbecue program here in Springfield, which was awesome. And, uh, um, so, so that was pretty neat. So, um, and, uh, well, I'll tell you what, we're, we'll talk about some of your grills in just a second, but before we do that, let's go ahead and, uh, talk about one of our partners, if you don't mind, just a second. And this week we're talking about Flame Boss Cruise Control for your grill. Flame Boss is the ultimate controller for Camadu grills and others as well. They are a Wi-Fi controller that you can connect to your charcoal grill. Not only can you monitor the pit temp, but you can monitor meat temps as well. And you can adjust the airflow, helping you to keep track of the temperature of your grill. If you go to work and you find that uh, you put on a brisket or some pork butts that morning and they're not getting done fast enough you can turn up the heat directly from your phone at work to have things done when you get home it is just an awesome tool to help keep track of your meat with always without having to always go out and check the grill itself check out flame boss at flameboss.com So Wendell, when you uh, got started, uh, and I don't know if there's been some kind of progress when it comes to grills themselves, uh, but um, um, you know, as it, with with uh, both you and, and Steve, what what kind of grills did you start using, and are you still using those types of, of grill smokers, or have you moved on to something else? No, it's been it's been a progression since then. 
I always, always have and still do have a grill, a gas grill on the deck just for quick and easy cooking. But when I started competing in, in back in uh, 2015 for that one contest at uh, the Rock and Ribs, I had uh, an upright cabinet smoker that I think was a $79 smoker from Lowe's. I also had, I borrowed a uh, oversized, uh, basically just an oversized grill from uh, the newspaper, and that's what we cooked on that first year, just real basic, uh, basic stuff. But once we uh, found out a little bit more about what it took, uh, I decided to get into the drum smoker world. I now have two gateway drum smokers, one Hunsaker drum smoker and a homemade drum smoker made by uh, Gray Wolf Barbecue out of Springfield. So that's my that's my competition arsenal. Mm-hmm. I now have a uh, uh, PK grill, which is great for yeah. a steak or burger cooking, just quick, hot, and fast cooking. And what else do I have? I have a, I have a basic Weber kettle. That's always good to have on hand because those yeah, things right. are versatile and you use them for about anything. Yeah, yeah, they are. It's I don't know if you've tried to smoke anything low and slow on your kettle yet, but a lot of guys are getting into that, trying to do these low and slow cooks and being very successful on Weber, Weber kettles, which I I never imagined would be possible without something like a slow and sear that you can put in there. But no, these guys are doing it. It's it's pretty interesting. You know, listen to some of the videos that they're putting out. So, but what what do you prefer? I mean, I know that I guess for different things, but maybe with just your drum smokers, because um, I which I guess all the drum smokers you mentioned are Missouri companies. They are all, all of them are Missouri companies, and in talking to a lot of the competition cooks from around the country we've had on the show, that they kind of refer to uh, Missouri as the uh, drum capital of the world and, and the Midwest in general as kind of the drum country. You know, you get up into Iowa and Nebraska, the, the Jambos and the Outlaw Smokers, those uh, uh, side, those uh, with the fireboxes on the side. Yeah, the, the stick, stick burner off as offsets. Those are the big things as they as they are in Texas. But mm-hmm. yeah, this is kind of the uh, the drum smoker uh, alley right here. You would say, and you still see probably uh, forty to fifty percent of the teams around here that are uh, using them out of competitions. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of, and of course, that's where I think. Uh, everyone, at least when my mind thinks of the hot and fast cooks in the competitions, they're usually on the on the drum smokers. So. Yeah, and what, what has surprised me is in talking to a lot of these jambo cooks, they they also cook hot and fast. I always thought it was a low and slow game for those guys, but they're cooking at uh, 300 to 350 on those jambos and uh, cooking briskets in four and a half hours, yeah. which really wow. amazed me, and they're having really good results. But yeah, I, I guess it just goes to show that no matter what kind of cooker you decide to use, as long as you become proficient at running the fire and uh, knowing what it can and can't do, yeah, it'll do the job. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Fire management is 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 key and learning your smoker. And that's um, I know a lot of guys. You know, they they can have a lot of smokers, but usually there's one they gravitate to more often than not. So, yeah, um, you know, especially when they really concentrating on getting something right is generally what I found. So. Uh, but so, so you've you've got the drum smokers. Are they you know, mainly the fifty five? I'm assuming fifty five gallon drum is basically all it is, right? They are the fifty fives. Yeah. And with the addition of the uh, Gray Wolf smoker this year, I now for the first time have four smokers for the four different meats. Always before when I would compete, I would be uh, doing a meat juggling act on on competition morning, mm-hmm. needing to finish something at a certain time so the other meat can get on and moving meat back and forth between the different drums. So uh, yeah. well, I feel like I'm getting closer to being on a more of a level playing field now. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Now, all of your, uh, where folks can find you, as far as the podcast, social media, and all that kind of stuff, where where all are you guys? Um, I know on on Twitter, often you guys are uh, posting pretty good on, on Twitter. Uh, but where, where else uh, can you be found, and, and what do they need to search for to find you guys? Yeah, we're on the web at tailgateguysbbq.com, on Facebook at tailgateguysbbq. Uh, Twitter is tailgateguys999, and uh, Instagram, tailgateguysbbq. And, of course, most of the podcast platforms we're on, you can just search for uh, Tailgate Guys BBQ Show, and we should pop up there. Yeah, and it, it is a great show. I, I, I again, I really enjoy you know not only hearing you and Steve go back and forth, um, you know, with the things that you've got going on, uh, but also the guests that you guys have because um, not not only just the information that that can be given, but here are these guys that are 
uh, like you said, number one, number two, you know, in the nation, perhaps, you know, at various times throughout the, the competition year. Uh, and you guys are talking to them and, and uh, you know, they're, they're just telling you about some of the struggles, what they, what cooks they've done that they, you know, really messed up on or cooks they did that were just, you know, probably one of the best that they thought that they've done. And, but maybe the judges didn't think so. And, and uh, so it's just interesting and just great hearing, you know, some of those stories that you guys bring out. Um, and again, it's just a, an awesome show. So, and uh, the, so that's been really cool. Uh, but when it comes to some upcoming things, you said you guys may be going up to, um, um, not yeah. out, where was it? Yeah, Osceola, Missouri Osceola? called smoke on the Osage. And that's already attracting a star stud field of teams mm-hmm. coming in from as far away as, uh, Virginia, old Virginia smoke. Uh, was going Luke Dornell is going to be coming in. He's a former KCBS chicken team of the year. Boomerang, the reigning KCBS team of the year, will be there getting basted out of uh, the Springfield Branson area. He'll be there. So uh, it'll be a it'll be a stout field. And uh, yeah. we always uh, liken it to being uh, we're, we're kind of the small market baseball team like the Pittsburgh Pirates who are taking on the uh, high spending uh, big boys. So any kind of success we do have is just that much sweeter. Yeah, yeah, and, but you are having success, which is another reason why I think uh, I think folks would really enjoy listening to the program because um, you know, there's a lot of folks that are like, man, I, I would love to get into competition. I'd love to do this or that, and and they they just they seem overwhelmed, and and I'm sure you guys did too at, at first. You you're kind of overwhelming. Uh, with all these teams, but uh, the the community that is there and generally what has been expressed is when you go to competition as a newbie, um, the, the, the old school guys are there and are willing to help, willing to, you know, give you pointers, tell you certain things uh, to really help you, which, uh, which is really cool about the community itself. Yeah. It's just an awesome, I call it a barbecue family that if you forget something, if you, uh, Forget, forget some wood, some wood that you like to use, like cherry wood or whatever. Somebody's always willing to give you some to replace yeah. it. Uh, yeah. I would encourage people to go out to a competition if they're interested and just, just, just uh, walk around and watch and see what it's all about. And don't be afraid to ask these teams uh, uh, why they're doing something or about their smokers or just, just about, just get, ask them some questions. Just don't do it near turn-in time on a, on a Saturday between <laughs> right. uh, eleven and uh, one thirty. But otherwise, it's it's a great experience just to go uh, talk to these guys because, just like we found on our show, there there is accommodating as can be, and they're 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 more than happy to uh, answer questions and help you out. Yeah, yeah. Now, real quick, we've talked about the the four meat competition. Um, but there's other parts of that competition uh, before we leave that I, I want to to mention because if I my memory serves me right, you guys didn't do too bad in some side um, some sides did cooking some sides maybe at Rock and Ribs a few years back. Yeah, that was two years ago. We we were, and again I guess that was actually our first first place. We won the pork loin category, which was it's a total shock. We we. Uh, barely barely got the pork loin done i didn't think we were going to make make it it was way under with 10 minutes to go and we decided to uh, just slice it up we were cooking it whole and decided just to slice it up and and basically grill it hot as hot and fast as we could and it was still only temping it i think 132 degrees when we pulled off put it in the turnaround box and you, you needed needed it to be 140 but apparently it uh had that carryover cooking in the five to ten minutes between there and the, when the judges opened the box, because it came out first place that day and uh, uh, shocked me and still right. does. <laughs> sure, yeah, right. Wow, and and, the, and so again, there's there's so much more involved. I mean, people are just thinking on those cooks, but uh, I I do remember that. I remember you guys did really well with the doing a side and or you know something other than those four meats. But uh, but the, then the next thing, whole hog. Have you? Any thoughts on entering into that realm? Personally, I, I have no uh, desire to do it. However, our team has cooked whole hog a couple of times at the old Rock and Ribs mm. barbecue festival. A good friend of mine is uh, out of the St. Louis area named Terry Black of Super Smokers Barbecue. He uh, competed at Memphis in May several times and actually won the uh, ribs title down there in 2000. But he's an experienced whole hog cooker, and he has come down here uh, twice to cook whole hog with our team, and it's been fascinating to watch him go through that process. Yeah, and he, I think we came in twice. Both times he was here, 
but his his whole log was tremendous and it's just uh, an artistic process to watch if you ever get a chance to watch someone yeah. cook a whole hog right yeah it is it, it's really involved and and even the um, how they set it up for the display and, and they there's there's just a lot involved with that which is really neat and uh, pretty uh, pretty impressive what what the creativity I think sometimes with those whole hogs that people come up with as well yeah all the way down to putting an apple in its mouth when it's done or uh, all to uh, putting the garnish around it to the yeah. greenery and the oranges and lemons or whatever to give it some color and make it look good right yeah yeah it's it, it's become an art. Uh, and then finally, the, I guess, and maybe hopefully I won't say that again, no. <laughs> but, um, but uh, have you guys done any of the virtual competitions that have been taking place? Yes. Uh, in the uh, middle of the uh, the pandemic, when it began back in March and there were no competitions, uh, an organization called the Barbecue League, which, which is a great resource, uh, has a lot of great videos and so forth for people to, uh, if they want to join, they can watch uh, full on uh, in video instruction on the different meats, but they had, they ran some virtual competitions. They had a virtual brisket competition, a ribs competition and a turkey competition uh, where you submitted a, you submitted three photos, the, the before, uh, the, the during and an after uh, of the cook, plus a 15 second video to demonstrate the meat's tenderness and a brief description of your cook. And that's how they judge it. We didn't fare very well at all in the brisket or the ribs, but we finished uh, pretty high in the in the turkey part of the competition. But it was something to do, and it was yeah, it was a fun thing. It, and uh, it's nothing like a real comp, but it was it was a right. lot of fun to do. Yeah, yeah, it almost comes more of a, a photo contest, it would seem, or yep. um, you know. But of course, you guys are used to writing, right? <laughs> you from the from the newspaper, uh, you know, industry or uh, journalism and things. But uh, but yeah, with the with the photos, that would be that'd be interesting. I don't. Uh, I might not fare too well. <laughs> well, apparently I didn't. I didn't write it descri- so, description of the cook very well because yeah. uh, they they our brisket finished almost at the bottom. So yeah. uh, even though we thought it was good, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Well, and I'm sure it tasted good. I mean, at least you guys got to eat it afterwards. That's true. So. We didn't. No, the judges didn't didn't uh, destroy. We had the whole thing to ourselves. Right there, you go. That's awesome. Well, Lyndall, I really appreciate you coming and, and joining me and talking about barbecue and, and uh, y'all's podcast because that has, again, it, it, it really encouraged me to, you know, jump into podcasting because, um, you know, kind of moved, while we do some videos still on YouTube, we, you know, are um, kind of moved from that for several reasons. But, you know, when I uh, found out you guys were doing podcasts, I was like, man, that that's just I love listening to podcasts and it turns out a lot of folks do. Uh, and, uh, and so it's been really, really great. And, um, uh, so I just honored that you come and, and, uh, and join me on uh, the blind grilling experience today to talk about what's been happening, um, with you guys and kind of how you got to where you are and, and competition all together. Well, all the times you've been on our show, we've appreciated it, and it's a, it's an honor to be on yours. So uh, thanks yeah. for having me on, Chris. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, folks, be sure and search for the Tailgate Guys Barbecue Show, and I'll tell you, you will not be disappointed. Check them out on all the social media platforms as well. And, of course, remember to look for YouTube.com slash Blind Grilling. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter as well. And, of course, if you're listening to this on YouTube, be sure and search for us on the podcast apps a blind grilling experience until next time remember if you're looking you ain't cooking